what's the legacy of Malcolm X and Muhammad Ali as Netflix prepares to release a new documentary called Blood Brothers based on the friendship between these two iconic figures. Let's take a look at who's behind the two names we hear so often. Muhammad Ali, Malcolm X. They define a whole generation to be themselves and be bold. I'm the king of the race. It's time for you and me to fight for ourselves. Let's start with Malcolm X, who was a prominent figure in the civil rights movement of the 1960s. He had a bold and unapologetic stance on black liberation. Who taught you to hate yourself from the top of your head to the soles of your feet? Who taught you to hate your own kind? Who taught you to hate the race that you belong to? So much so that you don't want to be around each other. As the US is still plagued by racial divisions, many believe Malcolm X's revolutionary words are as relevant today as half a century ago. We declare our right on this earth to be a man, to be a human being, to be respected as a human being, to be given the rights of a human being in this society, on this earth, in this day, which we intend to bring into existence by any means necessary. Malcolm and his family suffered from racial abuse, and Malcolm wanted to fight for the rights of black people. He became a key figure in the black nationalist movement, Nation of Islam. When you tell a man that he's Jim Crow, you're not playing on his emotions. You're telling him the truth. What you talking about? Hold it. He was brutally gunned down during a speech in New York City in 1965, and his death sent shockwaves around the world. Apparently, two men approached the speaker's rostrum and discharged shots at him from apparently very close range. As I turned around quickly, and the next thing I saw was Malcolm falling back in a dead faint. Now let's talk about Muhammad Ali. He remains the only three-time heavyweight boxing champion of the world. I'm going to float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. Jerry, I'm the greatest fighter that ever stepped foot in the ring. Money will be lost that night. This will be the biggest upset in the century of all boxing. All these big mouth people talking about I talk too much. Well, I want all of them to be there, and I'm going to shut up all of his mouth. They might be stopping against that might be all. At 22 years old, Clay became the youngest heavyweight champion. I shook up the world. He was poetry in motion. <laughs> I'm getting myself. I'm dancing. I'm dancing. I'm you, huh? No, I'm not there. I'm here. What? Talk about how big George Foreman is, how terrible. I'm scared for my life, how relentless he is. That sucker ain't nothing. George Foreman. Muhammad Ali has done it. The great man has done it. He was also outspoken about race and inequality. My main fight is for freedom and equality, and this is what I plan to do. So number one comes freedom first for my people and equality, and this is uh, what I plan to do after I'm through fight. And listen to this story about what he did after he won a gold medal at the 1960 Olympics. I took my gold medal, thought I'd invented something. I said, man, I know I'm gonna get my people freedom there. I'm the champion of the whole world, Olympic champion. I know I can eat downtown now. And I went downtown that day, had my big old medal on and went in the restaurant. So at that time, black things weren't integrated. The black folks couldn't eat downtown. And I went downtown, I sat down, and I said, you know, a cup of coffee, a uh, hot dog. The lady said, we don't serve Negroes. I was so mad, I said, I don't eat them either. Just give me a cup of Ali also refused to serve in the Vietnam War on religious grounds. He was subsequently stripped of his world title and barred from boxing for three years. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Muhammad Ali has just refused to be inducted into the United States Armed Forces. But I would like to say that there is another alternative, and that alternative is justice. In 1964, when Muhammad Ali, then known as Cassius Clay, was dominating Sonny Liston in the ring, Malcolm was in the crowd celebrating, and they spent time together that night. A few days later, Clay had announced his membership in the Nation of Islam. Why do you insist on being called Muhammad Ali now? 
That's the name given to me by my leading teacher, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. That's my right. original name. That's a black man named Cassius Clay was my slave name. I'm no longer a slave. Malcolm was not only Ali's friend. He was his spiritual mentor, and he played the ultimate role in shaping Clay's transformation into Muhammad Ali, the man who would become a global political symbol. I'm gonna fight, not for me, but to uplift my little brothers who are sleeping in the concrete floors today in America. Malcolm X eventually broke away from the group. We will work with any uh, groups, organizations, or leaders in any way, as long as it's genuinely designed to get results. Ali stayed with the Nation of Islam, and his friendship with Malcolm came to an end. These two men were both fearless and charismatic and used their platforms to speak out against racism, intolerance against Muslims, and other injustices until their deaths. And with many of these problems still rampant across the globe, their messages of freedom and equality are ever more relevant in the modern world.